Hello everybody, welcome back to another video as today we got another episode of your OGR as today we're going to be talking about the Edmonton Oilers making a massive comeback victory over the Pittsburgh Penguins and proving their record to 3-3 three and three with a massive 6-3 W over the Penguins in a game where we took a complete 180 and turned things around to make a massive comeback victory where McDavid almost fell to a massive injury. Uh, and of course, I wasn't able to watch this full game, so I'm going to kind of give a quick review because I only talked, really watched the third period and I was really it. So before we jump into this, I'd like to just say, if you are new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button as well. It'll be very much appreciated there, guys. So... Let's get into talking about this game here between the Pens and the Oilers. Uh, now, to note, I was working during this game. Unfortunately, I'm going to be missing kind of a chunk of these games this week. I'm only going to be able to watch like two fully, uh, one on Wednesday and one on Thursday. Even the one on Wednesday, I think I might miss like a few minutes of it. Um, but I'm going to be able. I'm not even going to be able to watch like any of the Saturday's game just because like I, I got um going to be doing a Junior B play by play uh, for the Fort St. John Huskies. So. Won't be able to do that, but let's get into talking about this game here between the Edmonton Oilers and the Pens, where we continue to get off to horrible starts. Uh, I mean, we didn't get off to the worst start in the world. We got Zach Hyman, who got a big goal, but we really gave the picks for Penguins that rope during that first period, and they really just ragdolled us massively. We really just did not get off to a beautiful start, taking some dumb penalties, and just weren't looking amazing. Zach Hyman, though, did get the very first goal of the game with his second goal of the season, and I was taking a look at a lot of the stats, and we really need to be, you know, we really needed our, you know, depth guys to get some big goals tonight, um, and we didn't really get to see McDavid at all. He didn't produce one single point. Drysdale did get three, but we had to, we got to see Kane get a goal, Nuge, even McLeod got one right at the end of the game as well, which was really good to see. But Zach Hyman got the very first one, and this was a beautiful pass by Bouchard who set up Zach Hyman for a beautiful pass he just set it up Hyman on a breakaway you know the typical forehand backhand move that Zach Hyman does and buries it right in the back of the net and then Ricardo Raquel on the power play gets his third goal of the season and the Oilers have been having a massive problem on their power play to begin with I have a quick uh, quick stat that I'm going to be pulling up here from our boy NHL underscore Sid Go check it out. He's an absolutely amazing guy. But he said the others ranked 27th in the league in PK goals allowed per 60 heading into this game. They allowed another goal on the PK, of course. One player alone probably won't make any uh, significant difference, but I don't see any reason against at least giving Pugliarvi a chance on the PK, which I totally agree. Pugliarvi really didn't get any special teams time, and honestly, I don't I, I don't know why they're not throwing him on there. Like He's the only guy that hasn't gotten any shorthanded time, and I'd like to see him out there. I don't know why we haven't really seen Pugliarvi out there, because he is one of our best defensive forwards. He is one of our best defensive forwards that we do have out there, so I don't know why we're not utilizing him to his full potential and throwing him out on a PK where I think he would probably do really good and why not give him an opportunity we are ranking you know 27th in the league right now in an area where we definitely need to approve upon with our PK I think that's definitely something that we do need to try and I think maybe bring in some consistency to our PK uh, Nuge and Hyman I've always liked on the PK but there's definitely you know some improvements that we definitely got to make without a doubt moving forward because it's just has not been amazing and we cannot be letting goals in especially since we've been playing so poor five on five wise we need to play a lot better on our pk and to continue to kill penalties we did the rest of the game we only uh let one goal in out of the five penalties that uh we did take which was good but we need to also take less penalties that is something to note as well we definitely need to take a lot less penalties and uh we gotta stop going to the box because we can't just keep giving teams opportunities after opportunities. Uh, but then Sidney Crosby got his fourth goal of the season. Beautiful pass by Ricard Raquel. Cody Ceci just wasn't being hard on his man. No one picked up Cece, or Crosby uh, dashing down, and he just buried it right in the back of the net for his fourth. Uh, and then his uh, going into the second period where everything kind of changed, Brian Rust got his third goal of the season. Beautiful goal by Brian Rust. Uh, absolutely just banked it off of Jack Campbell. Bouchard wasn't being hard on his man. Kind of just let Rust just undance him or just 
break his ankles, basically. Um, and it was a really nice goal by Brian Russ to get his third goal of the season. Uh, but right after that, kind of everything turned around. Uh, McDavid, I think somewhere around this time, went off. I wasn't able to watch the game, so I don't know when he went off to the bench. But uh, he, he had a little bit of a collision where he caught an edge. People were saying it was a dirty play, but the guy was just playing hard on his stick. There was really no shove from the picks for Penguin, but for the fact that if you look at his skates, he caught a rivet and he slipped and went really hard into the net. With McDavid playing at this type of speed, there's going to be plays like this that does happen with McDavid where, you know, he catches a rivet or whatever it may be and he's going at top mock speed and he's going to catch a rivet or go hard into the boards. It's just the way that it is. You know, there wasn't any targeting. I don't believe from what I watched in that clip, I don't really see any intent to injure Sidney Craw or uh, Connor McDavid on this play. So I really don't see it as a dirty thing. And I know people were talking about it as a dirty thing, but quite honestly, it's not. Yeah, I just watched the clip again, and it just looked like the Pittsburgh Penguins defender was just being hard on Crosby, wasn't really giving him a whole lot of space, and where McDavid was kind of positioned, he just kind of like caught a rivet, slipped into the uh, the post, and he's okay. You know, it's probably just going to be a little bit of a bruise on his back, but he did come back in the rest of the game, but I really don't see it as anything as a dirty play or any like uh, a vicious intent to injure Connor McDavid in that play. Uh, but moving forward, though, Tyson Berry got his first goal of the season with an absolute bomb on the power play from the point in his first goal of the season it was an absolute absolute laser from the point and then right after that Evander King got his second goal of the season by a nice pass by Leon Dreisaitl then right after that Nuge got his third goal of the season I really don't remember a lot of these goals unfortunately and then Leon Dreisaitl with an absolute beautiful move going forehand backhand and then just fucking backhand and right in the back of that that was a gorgeous goal by my boy Leon Dreisel again, his third goal of the season. It was an absolute amazing goal, and it was an absolute amazing move by Leon Dreisel, just absolutely addressing the defenders. It was gorgeous, and that's why we love both McDavid and Leon. And in third period, nothing really happened, uh, but for Ryan McLeod again, his third goal of the playoffs as well. Uh, but honestly, we were really able to turn things around. It seemed like the boys really woken up, like we were playing horrible for the first, you know, basically half through halfway through this game we started waking up and we started playing a lot better starting to get those offensive chances and we we were starting to wake up and that was the biggest thing is that you know we started waking up but we need to play like this the entire game we're supposed to be a team that's the most talked about team and we're just not playing like it right now we're playing like not great like it, it, it's like i've heard some people bring it up but this team is reminding a lot of oilers fans of when we made it to the 2016-17 playoffs the next year, the 17-18 year, where we had all sorts of expectations and we just absolutely sucked. That's what this team is kind of reminding me of. You know, there's a lot of that kind of glimpses of just this team really doesn't feel ready for this upcoming season and we need to be able to play way better than what we are right now without a doubt. We need to just bring a lot more pace and we need to play a lot better. Um, some players that I kind of enjoyed from the little bit of that I watched, uh, Bouchard looked really good. Uh, I really liked dry sales game throughout the night. Kane was looking pretty good. He generated a few uh, amount of chances, uh, but nothing really I could dissect into the players tonight because I only watched the third period. So there was really much I could dissect. Not like really anything happened during the third period, but for the Oilers just continuing to hem in the Penguins uh, in the Penguin zone. And especially what we did in the third period is what we need to do in the first the second, and the third. And we just need to do that throughout the entire game, and we just absolutely need to do that. That's something that we need to do, and we just need to play like that the entire game and not mess around. Um, and Jack Campbell, I thought he played really good from the little bit I, thought I did see uh, seen from him. I thought Jack Campbell played really good, and I thought he had an overall pretty good game for the Edmonton Oilers. But for now, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. I'll de definitely be able to give you guys a better review in the next episode. But for right now, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Adios, amigos.